A longtime rival of Sean Diddy Combs isn't holding back his feelings on the embattled rapper and producer. Curtis Jackson, better known as 50 Cent, has spoken out and at points even trolled Diddy numerous times before and after Diddy was swimming in several lawsuits for alleged sexual misconduct. Now in a new interview recently published by The Hollywood Reporter, the Get Rich or Die Trying rapper isn't mincing words on how he really feels about his arch rival. In the interview, 50 Cent addressed his relationship with Diddy, who faces a number of troubling allegations, including rape, sexual assault, sexual harassment, and sex trafficking over a string of lawsuits. 50 Cent says he's been very vocal about not going to Diddy's now infamous parties, which have been alleged as the site of some of the heinous acts he's been accused of. While referring to Diddy as his old moniker Puffy, 50 Cent said, I've been very vocal about not going to Puffy parties and doing stuff like that. I've been staying out of that stuff for years. It's an uncomfortable energy connected to it. When asked if someone told 50 Cent if the energy there was off or if he went to something that felt odd, 50 replied, he asked to take me shopping. I thought that was the weirdest stuff in the world because that might be something that a man says to a woman. He would go on to say from that, I wasn't comfortable around him. 50 Cent would go on to discuss the brutal hotel surveillance video released in May, which showed the bad boy founder horrifically attacking his ex-girlfriend Cassie. That incident was mentioned in Cassie's now settled lawsuit against Diddy, in which Diddy allegedly paid $50,000 for the tape. Once that video was made public, Diddy issued a public apology. However, didn't mention Cassie by name, as it's been reported Diddy is no longer able to say her name publicly as a part of their settlement. I was f***ed up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy going to rehab, had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry, but I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. The video was published to Diddy's Instagram, but has since been scrubbed from his page. Diddy's rival 50 Cent had choice words about the brutal video, saying first he denied that even happened, and then the tape comes out, so that means everything that N-word says is a lie. When someone watches that, if they have a daughter and they can imagine her being under those circumstances, that stuff is crazy. Like they let him get away with it. With all the influence and power you have, the person you're with is supposed to be a part of your life, not be forced. 50 Cent has long touted his plans to make a docu-series about his longtime rival. When asked what made 50 want to produce the series, he replied in part, I'm the only one from hip hop culture that's produced quality projects. 50 Cent and Diddy have collaborated on a few songs together. And when 50 was an unsigned rapper more than 20 years ago, he used to ghost write for the bad boy founder. But 50 Cent made it clear the two just work together. He replied in part, I wouldn't call it a friendship because there would be disappointment between us if we didn't speak to each other. There's points that we work together. 50 Cent would go on to credit Jennifer Lopez, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, who 50 Cent said told Diddy he would work with him as a songwriter in the beginning of his career. 50 Cent said this occurred when he was getting back to work after being shot several times in May of 2000. He would recall, though, one time when Diddy called and 50's oldest son's mother answered the phone and 50 refused to talk to Diddy. 50 would go on to say he didn't want to answer the phone because he didn't want to ever party or hang out with him. He replied, Puff is a business person. When people call him a producer, I see people that were taken advantage of who produce things that he took from them. He got credit. He's not a producer. He's been able to take advantage of the business and the creatives in it. I don't have any interest in doing that. I actually fall under the creative. So I just didn't want to hang out with that. I just want to take a brief pause from this story to talk about our sponsor, and that's City Lips. As someone whose work is on camera, I'm constantly having to touch up my makeup, especially reapply my lip gloss over and over again. And I'm definitely someone who really appreciates a glossy and plumpy look, so I had to turn to City Lips. City Lips is an all-in-one solution for dry lips, fine lines and wrinkles, and straw lines. It's formulated with clinically tested ingredients like hyaluronic acid for that perfect plumpy pout. 
And it's not just me who loves City Lips. Millions of women have tried them and over two tubes are sold every minute. You can check out City Lips by scanning the QR code on your screen or go to citybeauty.com slash lcnews. Use the code LAW15 for 15% off. That's promo code LAW15 for 15% off your order. Amidst the numerous amount of lawsuits Diddy's famous friends have kept noticeably silent on the allegations he faces. That's except for one famous friend, Stephen Jordan, a.k.a. Stevie J, who's Diddy's longtime friend. After Rodney Lil Jones Jr. filed his federal lawsuit against Diddy earlier this year, in which he referenced Diddy's infamous parties as seemingly the scene of a number of the allegations he now faces, including sex trafficking, forced drugging, and compromising footage of celebrities that have been held as blackmail. Stevie J seemingly responded with a post to Instagram with the caption, this is what a real Diddy party looks like. The video showed a number of famous faces, including Jay-Z and Beyonce, Kim Kardashian, her then-husband Kanye West, Naomi Campbell, and several others who were all together to celebrate Diddy's 50th birthday in 2019. Fast forward to 2024, 50 was asked why there have been so many silent voices when it comes to celebs speaking out about Diddy as if they're afraid to speak up. 50 replied in part, some of them were involved at the parties and enjoyed themselves, so they don't know what the F is on the tape or what's not on the tape, so they're not going to say anything because they might have had too much fun. And then you've got other people who look at it and go, well, that's not my business and I don't want to be in it. Then you got a part of our culture that says that's snitching or dry snitching. It's uncomfortable for me to say what I said because I've been saying this stuff for four or five years. Everybody else is not going to be as comfortable as I'm saying it. 50 Cent then alleged there's one famous friend that is aware of Diddy's alleged disturbing behavior. R&B legend Mary J. Blige, who got her start at Diddy's Bad Boy Records, has been a longtime friend of the embattled rapper and producer. But she reportedly has a great relationship with 50 Cent as well. When asked if Mary J. Blige reached out to 50, he responded, no, no. You know what? Mary never reached out to tell me not to F up Puffy because she knows he does that stuff. As Diddy and 50 Cent have long been in the rap game, they share another commonality, and that's 50 Cent's ex-girlfriend and the mother of his youngest son, Daphne Joy Navarez. The actress and OnlyFans model was named in Rodney Jones' suit against Diddy as she was referenced to as an alleged sex worker of Diddy's that also gets paid a monthly stipend. She has denied those allegations in a post made to social media writing, I am deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones' lawsuit. The claim that I'm a sex worker is 100% false and character assassination. I am retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. 50 Cent seemingly poked fun at the allegation of the mother of his son being an alleged sex worker. In a post made to his social media page, 50 wrote a caption, I didn't know you was a sex worker, you little sex worker, lol. But this would prompt Daphne Joy to respond to her ex again on social media, but this time would accuse 50 directly of rape and being abusive during their relationship. She would write in part, Everything is a joke to you until our safety is compromised, which is happening now. You are wreaking real havoc, frenzy, and chaos onto people's lives. How would you feel if Sire was the one in handcuffs for nothing? Let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of raping me and physically abusing me. You are no longer my oppressor and my God will handle you from this point on. You have permanently damaged the last hope I had for you as a father to preserve our family with these last and final false claims made against me. You have broken our hearts for the last and final time. Those allegations against 50 Cent would prompt him to fire back against his ex Daphne Joy and sue her for defamation. In his suit, 50 Cent said those allegations were unequivocally false and would claim she she made the shocking allegations in retaliation after he moved to take sole custody of their son. Since that suit, Daphne has deleted her Instagram post accusing 50 of rape and physical abuse. 50 Cent was asked by The Hollywood Reporter the latest in the defamation suit. The rapper and television producer said he tiptoes around the Daphne stuff and explained why. He said, I got a family court case. The allegations that came out, she posted things to her page saying some crazy stuff. But this comes eight hours after I filed for custody for my son. And she put that up in response to that, and I'm like, ugh. In this climate, you know how quickly they pass judgment. Things have worked out since she said those things. He went on to add, I'd like to respond and say some wild stuff, but I've got to sustain that for my son. 50 was asked if he was worried about the allegations, especially given he's making a docu-series about an alleged abuser. And 50 replied, it is damaging. It is damaging just to have anything said about you at this point, because you have people out there who don't believe your intentions. And if things are going in a positive direction for you and something pops, they gasp. He went on to say, for entertainment purposes, they exploit that as much as possible. 
but there's no merit to it. But one thing 50 wasn't asked was if he believed Diddy would be formally charged and or potentially indicted for the many allegations he still faces. But attorney Ben Chu, who represented Johnny Depp during his trial against Amber Heard, says he does see an indictment coming down in Diddy's future. I, I agree with that. I mean, obviously, I don't I don't have any inside information. I don't think many people do, but I, I do think the signs are ominous. These are very grave matters. As you know, there have been two raids um, on his properties, and that's uh, obviously very ominous signs for him. Although, interestingly, we haven't seen the indictments yet. There's been some time lag. I suppose it will take some time to go through all the forensic you know, evidence, but still, it, these, are, these are very serious matters. So I think, the, I think he, he faces um, some, some serious reckoning. Diddy faces a staggering number of civil lawsuits for sexual misconduct, 10 that have been filed since last November. Former adult film star Adria English filed her suit on July 3rd of this year, claiming she was first employed by Combs in 2004 and was groomed into sex trafficking over time. In May of this year, April Lampros filed her lawsuit against Combs, accusing him of battery and sexual assault. Two days prior to Lampros's suit being filed, Crystal McKinney also filed a suit against Diddy. McKinney alleges she met Combs at a studio where he gave her a lace joint, alcohol, then forced her to the bathroom and forced her to perform oral sex on him. Rodney Jones Jr. filed his lawsuit in federal court in February of this year that accuses Combs and the people who work with him of being part of an illegal racketeering enterprise. He also accused Diddy of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and harassment. Then there's a suit filed by a woman under the moniker Jane Doe, which was filed in December of 2023. Doe alleges she was gang raped and sex trafficked by Combs and former Bad Boy Records president Harve Pierre when she was just 17 years old and in the 11th grade. Liza Gardner filed her lawsuit against Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall in November of 2023, alleging the two forced her to have sex with them against her will when she was 16 years old. On the same day Gardner's suit was filed, another suit was filed, this one by Joy Dickerson Neal. She alleges Combs intentionally drugged her, then sexually assaulted her and recorded the assault. And then there's the only lawsuit that has been settled, a mere day after it was filed in federal court. And that's the federal lawsuit filed by Diddy's ex-girlfriend, singer and actress Cassandra Ventura, a.k.a. Cassie. In Cassie's now settled lawsuit against her ex, she accused Diddy of sexual assault, battery, sex trafficking, and requiring her to engage in forced sexual acts. Since the ongoing suits, Diddy has appeared to be living his life. He's been pictured biking around South Beach, getting onto his lavish private jet, and even white water rafting. But for his accusers, it hasn't been sitting well. After the photos were made public of Diddy seemingly enjoying his summer vacation in Wyoming, Cassie's lawyer Douglas Wigder released a statement to TMZ saying, quote, I don't think white water rafting will prepare him for the choppy waters that lie ahead. Adria English, Diddy's most recent accuser's attorney, also weighed in, saying after seeing defendant Combs white water rafting and jetting around on his personal plane, seemingly enjoying his life despite all the atrocities he has caused and has been accused of by countless individuals over decades, Miss English is even more motivated to ensure justice prevails. But attorney Ben Chu explains Diddy's recent appearances might just be a front. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it, it's um, I, I think it does show that um, you know, it's consistent with the image that it, that he's not concerned about this, that he will he will survive it all. Um, but it's uh, I, I think within there must be a certain amount of um, concern. I, I, I think whenever you have a video or audio tape and we've all seen the very disturbing video tape, I mean, it's very hard to watch. I mean, I, I didn't even watch the whole thing. I just it was too disturbing. And from an attorney's point of view, as you and I can appreciate and your viewers can appreciate, it's really hard to explain away audio tape. It's almost impossible to explain away videotape. And that's just damning evidence. It, it almost doesn't matter what you say because any human being looking at that is going to find that wildly disturbing. And, and all you can really say, I suppose, if you were the person depicted is that you just are her horrendously sorry about it. And uh, that's really all you can do unless you're challenging the authenticity of it. And I think that'll be difficult as well. 
as Diddy's arch rival 50 Cent is set to produce what could be a highly anticipated docuseries about the ongoing allegations Diddy still faces even to this day, Chu says the series could shed more light. It'll be fascinating because the documentary will be done by somebody who does have actual knowledge of the subject. So on the one hand, maybe he lacks a certain objectivity that uh, a documentarian who doesn't know Diddy might have. On the other hand, he probably has insights into Diddy that will make it all the more interesting for people like us to watch. I mean, I, I, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'll be fascinated because I do think he has insights. I do think 50 Cent seems like an incredibly thoughtful person in, to, in addition to being obviously an incredibly talented rapper. And uh, uh, it, it seems like he has a, a lot of uh, a lot of interest and a lot of skills. As Diddy's accusers hope for justice in their cases, Chu says while he does believe an indictment still nears for Sean Diddy Combs, he said if it's the case that criminal charges are not pursued, there's still a path forward for Diddy's accusers. I think it would be demoralizing. On the other hand, the civil uh, uh, standard of proof, as you know, is much more lenient. So um, I could see a prosecutor, even a prosecutor who believed in his guilt might uh, make the correct decision not to prosecute because as you know to prosecute you have to believe not only that the person is guilty but also that that you're likely to be able to prove it um, so you could have a prosecutor who cares about victims and cares about justice if she makes the decision that she doesn't have the evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt then it is the responsible decision not to indict, and we shouldn't prejudge that. Maybe, you know, we it, it, there may be no indictments here. Um, but I agree with the premise of the question that if, if you were a victim, then it would be demoralizing, but you still have civil remedies. And that's just, uh, you know, uh, preponderance of the evidence or, uh, you know, a slightly higher standard. So, um, you know, they, they could still get justice in the civil context. Well, I, I, I think, I still think it, it likely to, that it will be an indictment, um, or at least one, but um, again, nothing, nothing has been decided and we won't know till we know. Sean Diddy Combs through his lawyers have vehemently denied all claims against him. Those who have also been named in his suits, including former bad boy president Harv Pierre has also denied all claims against them. As for 50 Cent in his docuseries about Diddy, it was sold to Netflix. However, at this time, a release date is unclear. Reporting for Law & Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.